open for three and it's good. Manny Goodman wide open right wing uncontested. Knocks down the three, the Sugar Bears tie it up 12 to 12. We welcome you inside the Ferris Center where your Central Arkansas Sugar Bears remain, try to remain hot this evening. Tonight's opponent, the McNeese State Cowgirls here in Conway, the only matchup this season between the longtime rivals in the Southland Conference. Starting tonight, there are six games left in the regular season for your Central Arkansas Sugar Bears. And as we've told you every other time, the last three games coming in, it is still seven teams vying for two spots right now in the Southland Conference standings, barring something unforeseen like some others dropping back. What the Sugar Bears have done on this current three-game winning streak, which finds their record now at 10-12 and 12 overall and 5-7 and seven in league play, they come in seventh in the conference. 5-7 and seven right now would get them into the conference tournament. A half game over New Orleans, who they beat earlier this season and they are full game ahead of tonight's opponent, the McNeese State Cowgirls. The girls come in six and 17 overall. They are four and eight in conference play. They are in ninth place. Again, a half game behind New Orleans, who is four and eight. New offensive set call or drives left against Levy, goes up, forces it off the glass. It's good, despite getting bumped, no call, but it's five, four, Sugar Bears draw to within one. Now they nearly turn it over in the backcourt. There's Maddie Goodner getting after it again in the backcourt. That is what she does. Beavy throws it wildly intercepted by Boisage. She went too far under and got underneath and just threw it back out. Here comes Orr all the way in, circling around at the free throw line. She'll test that back, fire a three, good! Sugar Bears have the lead, it's seven to five. In and out. The ball batted back and there's another rebound by Camry Orr. Has her shot blocked, Laney picks it out of the air and a new 30 second shot clock for UCA. Sprinting down the right side of the lane, Hannah, Hannah Lange to Maddie Goodner. Goodner saw an open lane, went cutting right down the right side, nobody there. Lange with a pin perfect pass. Goodner left, open for three and it's good. Maddie Goodner wide open right wing uncontested. Knocks down the three, the Sugar Bears tie it up 12 to 12. Now over to Laney. Laney with 10 on the shot clock, drives it with her left hand off the glass, good for the lead. Laney Fisher just took it herself, banked it off from the left side. Six Central Arkansas is a 16 to 14 advantage with 2.25 remaining here in quarter number one. Levy back in, pushing it to Reagan. They work the ball right side to Maddox. Maddox lost it into the hands of Shay Johnson. Up the floor to Camry Orr. Orr up the right side, off the glass, and it is good. Transition bucket number two for Camry Orr, and it's 18 to 14. Central Arkansas with their biggest lead so far here in quarter number one. Sit back to Camry Orr, and there goes Orr in the front court. Uses a behind the back dribble to beat two defenders. Skips it back right to Boisich for three. Good. Just like that, the Sugar Bears have their largest lead of 10. Lange to Orr at the free throw line. Pull up, double clutch, shot is good. Hanging in the air, letting defender come back down and shooting it over for a 29-19 lead, matching the largest lead of this game by the Sugar Bears. Four minutes to go here in the first half. Johnson beats Maddox, layup off the glass, good. Shay Johnson beat the other freshman, their post player, a quick first step and beat her to the bucket, no help came, and an easy scoop shot off the glass. Screen right by Goodner. Goodner's open left side. She'll launch a deep three, and it is good. Her second of the game. Up 13, timeout, McNeese. Should drive against Levy, bounces it back out to Gooder in the corner to Lange. Long two point shot is swished through good. Hannah Lange with her first bucket of the third quarter. That's four straight out of the timeout. She has 11 of their 31 points. Johnson underneath to Thomas, off the glass. She beat Rashley Jones for a bucket. That is six in a row by the Sugar Bears. Or looking low to Thomas, posting up on Balligan. Or dribbles left, pull back, jumper good. The Sugar Bears do have their largest lead. It's an eight nothing run. 47-33, Sugar Bears up by 14 points. Five minutes to go in the third quarter. Orr gets a shot off anyway. They say the, the uh, defender got the ball as she went up. A great control by Orr. Hang in the air, get control of the basketball, and still bank it home. Who will she find? She finds Maddie Goodner streaking the basket. Missed her own shot, got it back, and just flipped it right over the front of the rim. Goodner now with 10 points in the game. The defense who came in best in the league, averaging, allowing just 56.1 points per game, right on target tonight. Goodner's little floater in the paint is good over Revis' outstretched hands. Goodner's fantastic night continues. Sugar Bear basketball, Goodner, Kennedy, 
Johnson, the three freshman, along with the senior, Elaney Fisher, who knocks down a jumper from the free throw line. She has four points in the game, does Fish. Carly Hutsmith has it. She'll launch a deep three with seven on the shot clock, and it is good. Carly Hutsmith knocks down the three. To the Fisher, head fake, drives back out to Shea, over to Carly. Long two on the way, good. Carly Hutsmith with five points. And a tie. Johnson beats Haynes with a crossover dribble to Hutsmith, a long three, go! Carly Hutsmith with a pair of threes, late. Eight points off the bench for Hutsmith. She is a shooting machine in Central Arkansas, 31 points with 12 seconds to go. Haynes, crossover dribble, hands it back to Tanks. Tanks has it, pumped away by Johnson, into the hands of Lowe. Lowe will take it up the left sideline, lost control of it, covers it, throws it up off the front of the rim, good, and that's how this one is. Another blowout victory at home for Central Arkansas. Tonight, it is 76-45. The Sugar Bears beat the Cowgirls of McNeese. How important has it been for this team to gel over the last four weeks? You get down, start 0-4, then 1-5, and, and really get yourself about as deep a hole as you can get. And then this team really came together. I talked to Coach Long in the pregame about there was a point in the season you guys could have folded and laid down and, and just continued to lose, but you guys picked it up, and now here you are 6-7 and seven on a four-game winning streak, winning five of your last seven games. Well, all I have to say is, it's not how you start, but it's how you finish. And this, that's a really big thing. So we knew that just because we started off bad doesn't mean that we have to finish bad. We can still could pick it up at any time because it, the, the conference is everywhere, basically. Everybody's losing. People are winning. Mm -hmm. So as long as we stay on our, our good games, then we're good. You and Cam and Antonio, the three seniors on this team, have really stepped it up to a different level. How important has that been for the seniors to step up and lead this team down the last few weeks? Very important. It's important that we have leadership as seniors and that we help the young people understand that we got their backs and that even though they might they might make a mistake, we got them, and that it's okay to make a mistake as long as you, you just recover. Mm -hmm. so. We talked to you earlier this season. Obviously, you're in your second year, but now we're you're five games left in the conference. You're six and seven. You kind of got this team's back in a position where you want to be. How important has it been for you the second time through the conference to realize and know what you've got to do to take care of yourself physically as well as mentally? It's very important. Um, now that we're playing, we're all playing good minutes. Mm -hmm. So, like, after every practice, we do ice baths and everything, and she tell us to, we need to rest our minds and everything just because this is the mental part of the second round of conference, and it's very important. So we all have to, like, stay on top of that. Your incredible lives are what make Arkansas so special. That's why doing our part to keep you amazing is our mission. By providing the most skilled doctors and nurses to heal you from sickness or injury and giving comprehensive care to support your recovery, we're your guide to health. All so you can keep on giving, keep on inspiring, and keep on amazing. For the care that keeps you amazing, visit baptist-health.com. At UCA, we have the second highest on-campus undergraduate enrollment in the state for a reason. Lots of reasons, actually. The University of Central Arkansas. Go here and go anywhere. Goodner with a head fake, drives to the free throw line, kicks it to Antonio for three. Good! Line drive three by Antonio Boisitz has given the Sugar Bears an early 3 0 lead. Go to the middle of the floor, Moore stops at the right elbow. Back to Antonio for another three! 6 3 Sugar Bears! Boisic with two three pointers already here in the first quarter. They've made Sugar Bears of Law. Launched ten, their last ten shots, they've only made one. Hard to get it out as Goodner launches another three and gets it. Sugar Bears needed that basket big for Maddie Goodner. Starts the second quarter off with a three from the left wing. UCA still down by eight, though, with 8.05 remaining here in the first half. Left hand dribble by Orr, double clutches in the paint, floats it over the front of the rim good. Her first bucket goes. UCA scored five straight. They draw to within six, 18 to 12. Shooting. The average making five a game. They have already made five here in the first 13 minutes. Goodner tries to answer, and she does with her second three-pointer. Right wing this time, left wing earlier in the quarter. Wasn't for the four three-point shots. This game could be over early for UCA. Orr drives in, pull up in the paint, gets the bucket to go. She's found some space when she beats her defender on that first step. The pull-up jumper just inside the paint on the conference logo. Two in this quarter so far. Sugar Bears down by nine, 26-17. They need more of that. Shea Johnson's getting extended playing time here, first half. 
Works the ball back to the top lane. Camry Orr has it, goes back left with to Shea. Shea with a head fake, gets rid of it to Cam. Top of the lane, three by Cam. She's whistling it home. Sugar Bears with the ball. Camry Orr launches a three from the left wing. It's no good, but there's Alex Thomas to clean it up, and she gets the bank shot off the glass to go. Sugar Bears, four-game winning streak is on the ropes here today against the Colonels. Maddie gets rid of it to Shea. Shea throws it to Carly Hutzmuth. Hutzmuth goes all the way in, slips it off the glass, up and under against Easy Chuku for the bucket. How about Carly taking it right at their post player? She went up to block the shot. She slipped it under with her left hand. Shea Johnson takes the ball away from Takira Williams, feeds it up the floor to Laney Fisher, layup off the glass, good. Shea Johnson with the steal and a layup by Laney Fisher. That's four straight for the Sugar Bears. Campbell drive in, gets bumped, spins, turns, free throw line jumper, good. No, it came out. It went down, went all the way down, it came out. Then Hannah Lange came away at the rebound. Orr goes in, slips it underneath the Thomas off the glass for two. It's a 7-0 run for Central Arkansas. They're down by 10, and the fans behind me are loving it. A comfortable 16-point margin once again. The Sugar Bears went on a 7-0 run to pull to within 10. They scored six in a row at the free throw line. Orr splits a double team, bounces it to Boisich on the right wing. Short inside the three-point line jumper is no good. Elaney Fisher's there to collect her eighth rebound, and with the left hand, she slips it off the glass for two. Bounce pass to Gooder underneath. Kicks it back out to Shea. She'll launch a straightaway three, and it's good. Shea Johnson from straightaway knocks down to three. They've outscored the Colonels 7-5 to five through the first four minutes and 20 seconds of the fourth quarter. Yes, they're still down 13. But this team is showing what we've seen the last three or four weeks. Wide open shot for Orr at the free throw line is good. Four straight from Cam. Draws their Sugar Bears back to within 11. 55-44. They're not going away here today. I'll say that. Four players in double figure scoring for the Colonels, and they still haven't landed that knockout blow. Johnson with a shake and bake. Underneath the Fisher for the layup. Dropped the dime with the right hand on the bounce pass to Fisher. In Central Arkansas, back to within 11. 59-46. Fisher into the corner to Savannah Lowell for three. Good! Savannah Lowell buries the three from the right corner. She's a shooter, and she was left wide open as they beat the press. That may do it. Hudspeth will drive right baseline, spins back to the middle of the floor. Cutting is Johnson. Johnson will take the free throw line jumper and bury it home. Shea Johnson with five points in the quarter, five points in the game. Shea today, five points, four rebounds, four assists, two steals, and no turnover so far in this one. Coach Duby plays on, so we'll leave most of her starters in the entire way, and that's the ball game. Sugar Bears fall by a final score of 68 to 52. Ah, spring break. A time to chill out and uh, go hang at the beach. Or maybe lay out at the pool? Um... Wait, where is everyone? They're all at the Merrill Center. It's the 2019 Southland Conference Basketball Tournament. Teams fighting for a spot in the big dance. And it all goes down in Katy, Texas. Call any Southland school ticket office or go to Ticketmaster.com. At UCA, students come in with the second highest ACT and GPA in the state and leave with a career that's second to none. The University of Central Arkansas. Go here and go anywhere. So, Carly, uh, let's talk about your journey here to, to Conway and Central Arkansas and how you ended up uh, playing for the Sugar Bears. What, how did you come to know the, the program, and what was the decision like to come here? How did that come to pass? Uh, well, the big thing that made me want to come here is – as soon as I got on campus, like, the whole atmosphere here really felt like a family, and the coaching staff felt like a family. And of course, I met um, the other girls on the team, and it was such a good atmosphere and something that I felt like I would not be able to find anywhere else, and so that was probably my favorite part. Um, you are studying what here? Well, I'm kind of – I'm still figuring that part out. I'm not real sure where I'm going yet, but we'll see. What are you interested in outside of basketball? Well, I'm thinking I'm I'm kind of interested in something with maybe interior design, so I'm still okay. thinking about that. All right. Uh, you come from an athletic family. I think a lot of people are familiar with your dad, who's been a longtime football coach, and now is at Austin P. I understand. Is it right? Right. And your mom was a heck of a basketball player back in the day. Mm -hmm. She was a three-time national champion at Delta State. Okay. So did she? Did you grow up playing? I mean, is that something you got into early? Pretty early, yeah. Okay. So, like, when did you start playing competitive? Um. Well, I'm not sure if this is what you're asking, but, like, I started playing in, like, kindergarten, first grade, and just never really stopped. Okay. So. Just, like, at home, or, I mean, when did you start playing, like, in a league or on a team? Um, well, we had this thing called upward basketball, yep. which is you start literally in the first grade, and you can go all the way up until you can start junior high in, um, 
in your in your school. So. Okay. So what was your what was your team like in high school? What was the program like? Uh, I'm not, I loved uh, my team in high school because we we literally played together since the first grade. So we knew each other like the back of our hands, and we were a family there too. And so it was a really good experience. So there you go. So you were looking for that same kind of environment in college. Yeah. yeah. How about for Coach Rushing? It's Coach. I don't mean to pick on you. Every time we have somebody on, I say the same thing. But uh, <laughs> some people are intimidated by coaches. Um, putting the level of importance he does on the defensive end of the floor. Obviously, that wasn't a concern for you. Did that intimidate you about the way they play or anything like that? Oh, no, I love that defense is like a big um, point for our program because, you know, I believe what coach teaches about how defense wins championships. So that's, I do like that. You also um, ran cross country, cross, cross country, I understand. I did. And had some success there. Yes, shout out to Kirk Cross Country. There you go. <laughs> So were you got you were successful as a team or just individually? Um, our team we did pretty good. We were the I, th- I believe we were the first team in MAIS to achieve a perfect score, which is um, we had five of our runners place first, second, third, fourth, and fifth in the state meet. You're just showing yeah. off. That's <laughs> impressive. Yeah, so it was pretty awesome. Okay, do you still run distance or? I imagine you probably don't try to run a lot of extra right now. Yeah, not too much right now, but. Um, some sometimes in the off season, but we do plenty of running right now. So. You hit a couple of threes against McNeese. What do you feel like are the strengths of your game right now, and and what are some things you want to develop as you continue on in your career? Um, of course, I'm still um, figuring out my role. Um, I'm just trying to contribute in any way I can. If my shot's not on, I'm trying to play defense or look for other people that are open or that are maybe their shots on. So, so growing up as the daughter of a football coach, was that? pretty much standard procedure you knew what your Saturdays were going to be in the fall uh I guess so I don't know <laughs> you didn't weren't really into football well I was but um I wasn't able to go to uh every game so if I wasn't there I was at my brother's games because my brother played football too where so did he play he um he went to play college at um uh, University of Louisiana and he tours ACL again so now he is um, a student coach at okay. Mississippi State oh awesome here I am back at UCA This is where I got my start. Acting in plays, studying literature, writing scripts. Campus has grown so much in the last few years, and the technology is incredible. UCA is where I learned the craft of storytelling and got ready for a career in New York and LA. That's how I got here. Go here and go anywhere. Go UCA. Each summer, student-athlete leaders from the Southland Conference's 13 schools get together for a retreat. Before we start another season of competition, there's time to have some fun and bond. We also share experiences of serving our campuses and communities. Together, Southland student-athletes completed more than 30,000 community service hours over the past year. We pull for each other and push to make each other better. Just part of what makes us Southland strong. You know, I was telling uh, telling some of our, our fans here tonight that uh, I was going to quote the Jermaine Jackson line from one of his songs back in the day. Uh, How did something so right go so wrong? I mean, this team was rolling at 5-2, and two, and it's been a, a rough, tough slog, I guess, of late. And it's interesting you guys get the rematch against SFA this week as the midweek game because that was really, it seemed like, the turning point for the season. Yeah, I, I thought that um, if we'd have won that game, it might have uh, kind of changed our, our perspective a little bit, you know, because we came home playing Northwestern State right after that, and that was the, the first uh, indication, you know, we got down 24 points. We came roaring back, but um, I, I think we were rattled after that point. And, and you know, with, with a, a team like ours, it's it's got a, new, a lot of new faces and a lot of people playing different roles and everything. Um, it's interesting to see how uh, one thing can trip the trigger one one way or the other. I, I was thinking the other day, Justin. I remember, and and, and I'll kind of put this. Uh, I'll tell you this story to lead to, to what I'm thinking here. I remember as an eighth grader having a free throw to tie the game with two seconds to go, and I remember that the, I don't. I I may have shot a free throw that was important prior to that, but that's the one I remember, and I remember going up to the line. And being scared to death, and and just really not wanting to shoot the free throw, I somehow made the free throw, and one of my buddies had a lane violation. the The shot was wiped off, and we went on and lost the game. But I tell you what, that moment, that ball going in that net, 
set the course for the rest of my career. I was always the guy at the end of the game, wanted to get fouled, wanted to have the, have the ball in my hands. And I've often wondered, what if I'd have missed that free throw? What if that, that, that first time, what if I'd have missed a free throw? Would it have scarred me? Would I have not wanted to, to shoot them anymore? I don't know. But I also know that teams do that sometimes. You get snake bit. You lose, you lose one, you ought to win. And, and you had an opportunity, and it went by the wayside. Does the next time, does your mind go to, uh-oh, here we go again? And then after that, it can really snowball. And, and that's the things I think that uh, people don't understand about coaching. You sit around and talk about those things. It has nothing to do with X's and O's and all that. But we're, we're doing the exact same things we were when we were playing well. Very, the exact same things when we beat New Orleans, which is the last game we won. It's just right now not working. And uh, I think the whole key is the consistency with it. You look to, to make corrections. Uh, you, you try to get certain guys to play to a higher level or whatever else. But the, the worst thing you can do is panic. You can change who you are. You can change your personality. If they, They're looking at me as Coach Quinton, as Coach Overaggressive, as Coach. And I think that that's when you really find out a lot about yourself and your team. You know, it's interesting because you've played some good stretches of basketball. It's just been hard to put two halves together. Really, Abilene Christian, even though you lost and had a chance at the end of regulation, losing overtime, that was the best probably overall game you've played really since then. I mean, there hasn't been a, a two-half game you talk about. I mean, the McNeese comeback, that was a great second half. There was another, I guess, the Houston Baptist game. You come roaring back after digging a big hole. And then the other night at McNeese, it was the first half. Get off to a great start, and I'm thinking, okay, because we talked about it going in. This team wins one, it could snowball because, again, we have seen it week in and week out. The other night, Houston Baptist takes Sam Houston to double overtime. Anything can happen in this conference tournament. It's a cliche, but this is a year where I absolutely, I think most people who have watched the league believe it. Um, but something flipped at halftime, and what was working the first half, you guys weren't able to pull off in the second half. Yeah, and I think in the McNeese game, I, I, I thought they did a good job of slowing the tempo down. We were playing really fast. We scored, I think, 45 the first half. And I thought they played our pace. In the second half, they did a couple things defensively. Went to a little zone here and there uh, just to try to kind of get us off of our rhythm. And, and, and we did. And then I thought we took some ill-advised shots. We quit going to where the, the bread had been buttered. Eddie was having a great first half. Uh, DeAndre was having a great first half. And those guys didn't get hardly any shots the second half. And I think right now that's a, another issue with the team is is figuring out, you know, who has got it going that night and let's continue to go with that until the other team stops it. We're a little bit of, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, equal opportunity offense. There's nothing wrong with that. But you also have to understand where the hot hand is and kind of go that direction. I thought we kind of got off schedule a little bit in the second half of McNeese. And then, you know, the Nichols game was just disastrous. It's one of those ones, you know, it, I, I looked last night uh, or over the scores over the weekend, and I saw where SMU lost by 40 at Central Florida. And, and Kansas lose by 30 at Texas Tech. I mean, those things can happen. You hate that they happen, and they're not excuses. You don't, you don't go home and go, well, that's no big deal. It is a big deal, but it can happen. And, you know, when a team makes 22 threes and – and some of those I thought were hard threes. They, they, they shot it extremely well. Uh, it can snowball on you, and especially when our offense was not very efficient uh, in the first half, really the whole game, but the first half when we needed to get off to a good start, it just was uh, anemic. Well, and shooting-wise, that, that is, again, we talk about it the last few few coaches' shows. We've talked about it on the postgame. We've talked about it as a point of contention in the pregame. And, again, I know you've worked through sh shooting slumps for teams before, uh, and you also mentioned, hey, look, there's a, anybody can go off at a certain time. I mean, we've seen DeAndre go for 29. That just had a 30-point game. Eddie's had a 30-point game this year. Plenty of guys can score the basketball. There's no question about that. But this shooting slump has been, and you, you talked about, the kind of, it's almost like the mojo has gone out. And even when you got off to a good start the other night, couldn't continue it on in the second half where you end up 0 of 9 in the second half. And then you do hit, a, I think, a 3 or 2 in the, in the overtime. But, uh, I mean, that is hard to figure. And when shots don't fall, I mean, what do you say? If you're like the shots you're getting, what more can you do? Yeah, that's uh, that's difficult. And, uh, again, I think it goes back to, you know, I think one of the blessings of having a balanced team when it's playing really well is you're hard to scout, you're hard to guard. But one of the drawbacks is when you don't have that one guy who everyone's scared of of going off for big numbers, um, then I think that, you know, you're, you're kind of at the mercy of that night if, if – uh, you know, the group together can collectively do it. I, I think another thing that, is, that has hurt us, we're not quite as good inside as I had hoped that we were. Uh, Hayden's still not quite physical enough. SK is just now kind of starting to come into his own, I think. 
Um, and and I, I'm hoping in time, I'm hoping in the future that that's, that's a big plus. Because when you go seven foot six ten down there, you, you need to be getting a little bit more. And, and Hayden's got wonderful numbers, don't get me wrong. He's actually having a fantastic sophomore year. But I, I think that we felt like we were going to score a few more paint points than what we've been able to do thus far.